Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A Plus certification training course on upgrading to Windows 2000. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to step through an entire Windows 2000 upgrade from beginning to end. This comes from our Windows uh, upgrade requirements in our CompTIA 220 601 Essentials Exam, Section 3.2 where we need to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade operating systems. So we'll give you a quick overview of what we need to do prior to the upgrade. And then we'll do a live upgrade from Windows NT to Windows 2000 and give you a feel for what's involved for doing that. First, let's step through what we need to know prior to doing an upgrade. We'll do an actual upgrade online here so you can see it happening. And after the upgrade is done, what do we need to think about? How do we verify it? And what other updates do we need to consider? Now, the upgrade paths from any of these operating systems to Windows 2000, we've got a lot of options. We can pretty much upgrade to Windows 2000 Professional from any of these except Windows Millennium Edition, Windows ME. So for your exam, you may get a question that says, uh, uh, what operating systems are available to upgrade from Windows 2000? It might list out all four of these, and you have to pick the three that you can upgrade from, or maybe the one that you can't. So just keep in mind, Windows Millennium Edition, I can't upgrade to Windows 2000 from that particular operating system. Now, the minimum requirements is also something we need to keep in mind. This is from a previous uh, one of our presentations that talked about the Windows 2000 Professional minimum and recommended. And remember that the minimum is just the bare minimum to get that operating system loaded. Doesn't actually mean we can do very much with it once we've got it installed, which is why we have these recommended requirements. So make sure that you have at least a Pentium 2 with 128 meg of RAM if you want to do anything. But just for the upgrade, there's a very minimum Pentium 133, 64 meg of RAM, 650 meg of hard drive space. Now, I've put together a system that has all of that, so we should be in good shape. Shape. We also need to check that the software that we're running today is going to run in our new operating system and that the hardware that we have in our current system is compatible with Windows 2000. Not all hardware will work with Windows 2000. And Microsoft has this Windows 2000 Readiness Analyzer, which is this checkupgrade.exe file that you can download online or you can get from the CD-ROM. And make sure you have the latest device drivers available before you perform the upgrade itself. Well, let's begin an upgrade. What's involved with doing an upgrade to this operating system? Let's see what we have to do. Now, one of the easiest ways to do it is you, you start the upgrade from the operating system that you want to upgrade from. So if you were running Windows NT, you need to start your Windows NT desktop and then begin the upgrade process. This isn't something that you normally do by booting from the CD-ROM. Your best bet is going to be starting the operating system itself. So you'd run Setup EXE from the CD-ROM. If you have autoplay on your CD-ROM, then it should start up automatically when you put your Windows 2000 CD in there. Now let's say you didn't want to start your upgrade from the setup.exe in a Windows desktop. You wanted this to be a batch process, or you wanted to start it from the command line. There are two different commands that you could use. If you're upgrading from a 16-bit operating system, and there aren't very many of those left anymore, but if you're running Microsoft DOS on a machine and you want to upgrade to Windows 2000 from MS-DOS, you can run winnt.exe. For all other upgrades from 32-bit operating systems like Windows 95, Windows 98, or Windows NT, you can use WinNT32. As we mentioned before, Windows Millennium Edition is a 32-bit operating system, but there is not an upgrade path to go directly from Windows ME to Windows 2000. You would have to go through a separate process if you wanted to take the data off of a Windows ME device. Now, you can't go wrong. If you run the wrong one, Windows will tell you that you're running the wrong one. But for your exam, you may be asked, if you wanted to run an upgrade to Windows 2000 at the command line, which one of these do you use? Do you use WinNT? Do you use WinNT32? And they may give you some other red herrings along with that that you have to choose from. So keep in mind exactly which upgrade you might want to do from a command line based on the information that's here. Let's perform an upgrade now. I have a Windows NT workstation that I've been using. And I went ahead and put a couple of documents on the desktop, one that's called Professor Messer Migration Document, the other one that's called the Training Course Text Information. And I put that there so that when we do an upgrade, we can check and make sure that those documents still exist whenever we get to our new operating system. If you look at the text information, a very technical document here, important information. It's a text file. It's just something so that when we get to the new operating system, we can see if that information is still in that text file. 
Now, I also wanted to show you what was on the CD-ROM itself. This is our Windows 2000 Professional CD-ROM. And you can see that there are a number of files on the root of that hard drive. Setup.exe is the one that we would normally run from this view to start our operating system upgrade. And I mentioned in an earlier slide that we could run WinNT or WinNT32 to, to start that entire process from the command line. And that's located in the i386 directory right here. There are a lot of files in this directory, 4,001 files in this directory. And if I arrowed it all the way over to the Ws very quickly, here we go. It's way over on the right side. The WinNT is right here, and the WinNT32 is right here. Now, I'm running Windows NT on my machine, so I'm running a 32-bit operating system. So if I wanted to upgrade from my 32-bit op operating system, I would really run WinNT32. If I run WinNT without doing that, it says, sorry, this program doesn't run if you're running a 32-bit version of some Windows operating system. And it even tells you you should probably even run WinNT32 EXE instead. This can't continue. Press Enter to exit. So you can't go wrong here. You just need to keep in mind what the requirements are for your exam. What we're going to do is run it from setup. And we'll double click our setup.exe and get things going. And it pops up the screen that says, this CD-ROM contains a newer version of Windows than the one you're presently using. Well, yes, it does. Would you like to upgrade to Windows 2000? What could be easier than this? Let's click Yes, we would love to upgrade. And it says, would you like to upgrade to Windows 2000, which is the recommended thing here? Or would you like to install a new copy? Now, when we install a new copy, we could also put it alongside our Windows NT and do something called a dual boot, where I can either launch Windows NT when I start up, or I can launch Windows 2000. This does not upgrade the components and the hardware and the software on your system, though. It creates a brand new clean install. So what we're going to do instead is do an upgrade to Windows 2000. If you'd like to do a clean install, go back and look at our video on installing Windows 2000. You can see how that works from the very beginning. So now the first thing we get is the license agreement. Do we accept the terms of the license agreement? Feel free to read through that, because the end user license agreement are the terms that you will agree to when you begin this upgrade process. We'll say yes, we accept this agreement. And the next piece that says, if you're licensed, you need to apply the license key for your system. Now, I'm not going to show you my license key, but every single version of Windows that you have has a license key associated with it. And you need to make sure that whenever you're installing Windows that you have the license key for that piece. You can't duplicate license keys across them. Microsoft keeps track of what systems are using what license keys. So make sure that you're licensed properly and you have the license key for the computer you happen to be using. If this is a system that you got from a manufacturer, there may even be a sticker on the system itself with the license key for the operating system that shipped with that particular unit. Once you have your product key in, you click the Next button. And it says it's going to copy some installation files from the CD-ROM that we have in there. And now it says this particular portion of the upgrade process has completed successfully. It's now going to restart our computer and begin the installation process to do the upgrade. And we can choose not to restart right now if there's something we'd like to save. But in our case, I'd like to restart the computer and have it begin the process. So now we're starting up. It even says, press a key to boot from the CD. I don't want to do that at this point. Even though my CD-ROM is still in there, I want it to keep going. I'm going to stop this process real quick. You'll notice it was doing a five-second countdown timer. When we started our computer originally, I had the Windows NT Workstation and Windows NT Workstation in VGA mode. So there's a new option now. And if you recall from our installation videos, what it did was update the boot.ini file so that it would start somewhere different on the hard drive for this installation process. And it put a little li uh, link here on the startup that said Windows 2000 Professional Setup, which is exactly what we want to run. That was now the default. And if we had done nothing, five seconds later, it would have started up automatically. So let's hit Enter. And it's going to begin the setup process here. It's really more of an upgrade process. But this looks very, very similar to a raw install, a clean install of Windows 2000 if you were to do it from the very beginning. It's really that first process of starting it that's a little bit different. As it begins the setup, you may find that your install 
for your upgrade or your raw, raw clean installation it may take longer. It may be faster. It depends on the type of hardware you have in your system. And it depends on the speed of the hard drives and the CPU that you have and the media that you're installing this from. Now, at this point, we're starting to copy files. So the installation process is taking the files from my CD-ROM and it's pulling them over to my hard drive into a temporary area so they can then do a full installation. So this will take a few minutes as it goes through this copying process. Now that Windows has finished copying all the files that it needs, it initializes the configuration, saves some information, and now begins another reboot process. And when we, we begin this next reboot process, all of the files that it needs are going to be local on the hard drive. And now the rest of the installation process tends to go relatively quickly. Again, we get the prompt to press any key to boot from the CD. You don't want to do that. You're still booting from the hard drive. And now we're getting a different startup. We're now starting Windows. This has a, a different splash screen on it as well for Windows 2000 Professional. So this is not the Windows NT operating system we were starting before. We really are starting with some Windows, NT, Windows 2000 Professional uh, pieces in this. And you can see the startup process looks a little bit different than the Windows NT. Even though it looks like it's just a splash screen that pops up, there's a lot that's happening behind the scenes. A number of files are being initialized. We're checking some hardware. And so you'll see the screen will tend to stop and restart every once in a while. But give it some time, and it'll eventually get to its opening screen that we're at right now. This particular part of the setup process looks very similar to the Windows 2000 clean install process that we did in our other video. There's not much difference between the two at this point, And a number of the, the things that will pop up on the screen are identical to that initial process that we saw before with the clean install. Before the installation can do anything for this upgrade, it wants to be sure that it can communicate to you and that you can communicate to it. So we know the video driver is working at this point because we can see the screen. It's going to make sure that the keyboard and the mouse and the other minimum hardware pieces that we need to get running are going to install properly so that we can continue the upgrade process. If you've never done an operating system upgrade before, you can start to see that this is not a trivial process. There's a lot that takes place. And one of the things that we said earlier in the presentation is make sure you have a backup. Always have a backup before you begin doing anything this major with an operating system change. And you can start to see now why that's so important. Now that we've got all of the device drivers we need running, we're going to install some initial components that we'll need to finish the setup process. Now Setup's going to step through some process of getting your menu items there, registering some components, saving some settings, removing some temporary files. So it's, it's really going through the final steps that it needs prior to completing the, the upgrade process for us. So the, the entire process itself goes on behind the scenes. There isn't much to do. One thing you will notice is that instead of going through and getting a lot of prompts for uh, the the in international settings, your time zone, what you'd like to set up for your network. Notice that you didn't get any of those in this installation. And that's because you were already running with a network configuration. You had already configured what particular country you're in and what type of keyboard you're using. So the setup process didn't have to ask for it as if this was a clean install because this one was an upgrade. It already took the existing settings you had and just applied them into this particular upgrade configuration. Now that it's finished going through the process of cleaning up, now that it's done with the upgrade, it says your Windows 2000 has been successfully upgraded. And it's going to do one final reboot to restart the system. And we're going to see if everything works. There's our startup. Again, I have my CD-ROM still in the drive. We're not going to boot from the CD. We're just going to let it start Windows normally. If you've done upgrades in the past, you know that this is a critical spot, this initial startup once you've done the upgrade. Because now there are all new device drivers, new video drivers, new uh, drivers for your keyboard. Every piece of hardware you have in your system has now got new drivers associated with it. And so if there are any problems with the operating system drivers that are there now, you're going to see it during this initial configuration. As long as everything now finishes up, we don't get any major errors, we're probably in pretty good shape. Windows 2000 is starting up. It's already preparing the network connections. And we have our login page. So we've gotten so far here, this is looking really good. Let's put in our password and hit OK. It'll load up our personal settings. And what we're hoping to see is a desktop that looks similar to what we were working with before. 
Here's the desktop. Now we're running Windows 2000 Professional. We're no longer using Windows NT. It gives us this getting started with Windows 2000 page that'll help us through registering and learning more about what's new in our operating system that was different than Windows NT in the past. We heard some, some noise, some music playing earlier, so we know our audio driver is working. And if you'll notice on the desktop, our migration document and our course text information is still there with exactly the same information as we left it. It's the same hard drive. We didn't delete anything from the hard drive. We simply upgraded from one operating system to another, and Windows was nice enough to even include the old desktop information that we had previously. Now that the upgrade is complete, have we looked and done everything we needed to do? We need to make sure it works, and we were able to boot. We got through that boot process, and we may want to let it sit at the login prompt for a while. I have some people that I work with that like to stay at the login prompt and let every possible service load and every possible driver load before logging into the system. It's not a bad idea. And we wanted to be sure if everything was still there. Are all of the documents that we had, our application data, our music, our pictures, and everything else, are they still on the system? And are they in the form that we left them? And as we saw, our documents and our desktop was exactly the way we left it with exactly what was there. And the documents looked just fine. Now that we've upgraded, we haven't finished the upgrade. As I mentioned earlier, we want to be sure that all of the service packs are installed here. So you may find you have to go back afterwards and load some setup, uh, set up some service packs and some patches afterwards because the security patches are coming out every week, every month, very often for different applications and for parts of the operating system. So we want to be sure that we're doing an upgrade after we get everything upgraded. There are certainly going to be some driver updates from the ones that we have on our system. And perhaps your applications themselves also need to be updated. So make sure you install new versions of applications if it's required. In review, we've gone through looking at what we needed to do prior to upgrading to Windows 2000. We've performed the upgrade itself, and you were able to step through that and watch me as I did an upgrade of my Windows NT device. And post-upgrade, we made sure the system was running. We checked to make sure our data was intact. And we talked a little bit about the things that we need to do now that we've performed this upgrade to get it up to the latest service pack and make sure all the latest patches are there. For more videos on operating systems, on hardware, to participate in our message boards, and much more, visit our website, freeaplus.com.